So do you have someone in your household that is leaving on lights or more specifically a bathroom exhaust fan? That can really rack up the electric bill, especially when you go over the course of a month. So in this video, I'll show you a very easy installation that will take care of this issue. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so this is my bathroom exhaust fan. As you can hear, it is running. And then if we go over to here, you will see here are my light switches. This one over here operates the fan. So we can have that off. And this over here operates the light, obviously. All right, so the first thing I wanna do before I do anything with this is I wanna make sure that the power is off that is being sent to this box to these switches. All right, so now that the power is off, clearly this switch no longer operates the lights, the fan doesn't come on. If you wanna take an added step and use a voltage detector to make sure that there is in fact no voltage there, you can do that as well. Now I can take the cover off of this box. All right, so like I said earlier, this switch over here is the one that operates the fan. So this is the one that I'm gonna to wanna to replace. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the screws and pull it out away from the wall. So in my case, I know it's hard to see in the back of the box there. And when they built the house and they painted the walls, they just sprayed over these boxes. So it's hard to see the difference in wire color. But in the back where you see that red wire nut there, there's a whole bundle of white neutral wires there. And that's very standard in a newer home where the neutral wires are all going to be wrapped together and tucked in the back of the box. Now in an older home, you would probably just have these two wires, a line and a load. You might have a ground, but more than likely, you're just going to have two wires. They might both be black. One might be black, one might be white, and there won't be any neutral wires present in the box. So this install that I'm going to show you, the switch that I'm going to install is going to use a neutral wire. But if you do not have neutral wires in your box, that does not mean you cannot do this install. I'll explain later in the video what you can do, but for the most part, all the steps are gonna be the same, excluding the neutral wire. All right, so now I can remove my wiring from my switch. All right, so here is my new switch. And here on this big part here, this is just like your standard rocker or decor switch, where pushing on the top turns it on, pushing at the bottom turns it off. But then over here on the right, we have different minute increments. And this is the key for this switch. So down here at the bottom, we've got 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, or 60 minutes that you can set it to, and then it will automatically turn off. On the back here, we have a black, a white, and a red wire. So since this switch requires that the line, which is the black, and the load, which is the red, are to be connected to specific wires that are coming out of the wall, I need to figure out which one of these black wires is my line and which one is my load. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to turn my circuit breaker back on so that I've got power going here. So in order to figure out which one's live, I'm gonna use my voltage detector here. And once it senses voltage, this 120 volts light should light up right here. I'm gonna put one of my probes onto the ground wire there. I'm gonna take my other probe. I'm gonna attach it first to this bottom black wire here and no voltage. So again, I'm gonna keep my probe connected to that ground wire, and then I'm gonna take my second probe, I'm gonna to touch it to the top wire. And as we can see, the voltage detector has lit up, it's up to 120 volts. So now I'm gonna turn the circuit breaker back off. All right, so now that circuit breaker's back off, I'm just gonna use my voltage detector again and make sure that there is in fact no power going to this. All right, so we're good. It's always a good idea once you've located your line wire to just take a piece of electrical tape and just wrap that wire with that electrical tape. And what this does is it just acts as a flag for you or anyone in the future that might be working on this that someone has noted that this is the hot wire. All right, so the way that we connect the wires coming from the switch here to the wires coming out of the box, these are, in my opinion, the worst wire nuts that anyone could possibly use. They're just not made very well and there are much better options out there, which I personally prefer these gray ideal wire nuts. These wire nuts are fantastic. I've used them on numerous projects and a lot of the electricians that I speak to speak very highly of these. And while I can and normally do use wire nuts on pretty much all of my electrical projects, on this project, I'm gonna use these Wago lever nuts. And I'll talk more about these in just a moment. And the reason on this project, I'm gonna go with the Wagos instead of using the wire nuts. I could use the wire nuts, they would work just fine. But if we look at the wiring that's coming out of the light switch, you can see this is stranded wire. That's not to say that a wire nut can't do the job, it absolutely can. I just think for this particular install, the lever nuts are a decent option to go with. All right, so the first wire we're gonna install on the switch is the bare copper wire. As you see, I left the J hook on there because on this switch, there's no green wire for it. We have to wrap it around that green ground screw on the switch. And while we're doing this, we wanna make sure that this J hook on this wire 
is going to wrap around this green terminal screw in a clockwise direction. And the reason we wrap it around in a clockwise direction is because as the terminal screw is being tightened down, as it's turning clockwise, it's going to promote pulling that wire in closer to the terminal screw itself. Whereas if it was wrapped around the opposite direction, it would actually be trying to push it away from it. All right, so now that ground wire is on there nice and tight. The next wire we want to install is the white neutral wire. Now again, if you don't have a white neutral wire, you can go ahead and skip this step. For those of you without neutral wires, again, I'll get into that a little bit later. But for those with neutral wires, we're gonna connect the neutral wire and we're gonna reach into the back of the box and we're gonna pull that bundle of white neutral wires out towards the front. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to remove the wire nut from these wires. I'm then gonna take my white neutral wire that's coming from the switch. I'm gonna put it up next to my bundle of white neutral wires that are here. I'm gonna make sure that the stranded wire is slightly longer than my solid core wires that are twisted together. I'm then gonna take a new wire nut, not use the old one, put those wires up into that wire nut, and then twist that on and twist the wires together tightly and tuck them back in the back of the box where they were before. All right, so next I'm gonna connect my red wire that's coming out of the switch and connect it to my load wire. Now remember, I marked my line wire. It was up here on top with this electrical tape. So this other black wire is my load. And like I said, for this install, I'm gonna use this Wago lever connector here. Now this lever connector is capable of holding two wires. They also make lever connectors capable of holding three wires, five wires, or they also have inline connectors to where you can hold two wires, but they're in line like a butt joint. All right, so I'm gonna take my red wire, which is for the load, and connect it to my load wire that is coming out of the wall, which is this one here. And if you don't know how these work, they're very easy to use. You just flip up the levers on the connector. Then on this side, we have two ports here. That's for the wires to go into. So I'm gonna go ahead with those levers in the up position, take my load or red wire coming from the switch, insert it into that connector. Once it's seated, I can flip that lever down. And now that wire is locked into place. What's also nice about these is we can flip it over here to the bottom. We can see through this clear plastic, see that it's seated all the way at the top. And we can also see the bus bar and see that it's making a good connection. So now I'm gonna take my load wire coming out of the wall, put it in the other port. Once it's seated, flip that lever down, pull on those. Now they're not coming out. And now these two wires are connected and I can push them into the back of the box. And now last but not least, I'll hook up my line wire. So I'll flip the levers up again on my Wago, take my stranded line wire, and insert it into one of those ports on the Wago. Once it's seated, flip the lever down. And then likewise, I'll take the line wire coming out of the wall, insert it into the Wago, flip the lever down, give both wires a good pull. Now I can push those into the back of the box. Now I've got all my wiring connections made. Now I can take the light switch and screw it into the box. All right, so now the switch is wired and it's seated in the box. This is where now we need to put a cover plate on. So there are two options. You could either now switch out this switch with a decor light switch and install this double decor switch plate, or we can leave it the way that it is and install this single toggle, single decor switch plate. And for the sake of time for this video, I'll just go ahead and install the decor toggle switch combo plate, but pretty soon I'll probably just switch out that light switch and then install the double decor switch plate. But you can make the choice for yourself as to which one you like best. All right, so now I can turn the circuit breaker back on and test the switch out. All right, so like I said, we can manually turn on the exhaust fan using this paddle over here, which is like a standard Decora. If we push this up here at the top, this is on. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the fan has now come on and it automatically defaulted down here where this light is that it's gonna be on for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it will then turn off. Likewise, we can also push the bottom here and it will turn the exhaust fan off. If we wanna pick a different duration or just pick one specifically, again, all we have to do is push one of those buttons. It illuminates that time, so now it's gonna go for 10 minutes. Or of course, I could do 20, 40, 60, and each time the light is gonna let you know which setting it's on. Now, earlier I talked about, for those of you that do not have a neutral wire, what are you going to do? Because you're not gonna be able to use this specific switch. This specific switch requires a neutral wire in order for it to work. So what you can use instead of this switch is a different switch like this one here. This switch here will do all of the same things. It looks a little bit different where the on off is just this button down here. And then you can either pick either five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours, four hours. But if we look down here at the bottom, you can see right here, 
where it says no neutral wire needed. So there are switches out there that you will not need a neutral wire on. If you've got a switch loop, it's not a problem. You can still install one of these switches. The instructions will pretty much be the exact same with the exclusion of the part dealing with the neutral wire and possibly the ground. And of course, like always, I provide links for everything I used in the video, including the switch that I installed, the switch that does not require a neutral wire, and I'll also have links for all of the various wire connectors, tools, and face plates that you saw in this video. There will be links for them down in the description down below. When you click on them, they will take you directly to those so you can check them out for yourself. Now, if you found value in this video, then you'll definitely find value in a video that I did in the past where I go over how to fix the issue of someone leaving lights on constantly. I go about doing this by installing a motion switch. If that's of interest to you, then click on this video right over here. When you click on that, it will take you directly to it. So I hope that you found value in this video. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.